Hello everyone, welcome to EM Aviation. Today we'll meet a new player, discover why and how it was created, explore its challenging journey and try to understand its role in China's plan to dominate the civil aviation market. Introducing the ARJ-21 Xiangfeng. By the late 20th century, the market for regional jet aviation was experiencing a renaissance. Airliners from different manufacturers were actively competing in the skies with everyone eagerly anticipating the next big thing, the E-Jet, MRJ, SSJ and C-Series, among others. At that time, the Chinese aviation industry wasn't exactly keeping up. It's not that they didn't try, but their attempts were less than successful, lacking the necessary technology and capabilities. For a long time, they focus on expanding the industry rather than challenging the market, largely ceding it to foreign companies. By the end of the 20th century, Chinese aircraft manufacturers decided it was time to start producing their own competitive airliners. They proceeded cautiously, advancing from simple to complex. The Xian MA-60 and its modifications, small turboprop airliners similar to the ATR and Dash 8 were their initial offerings. These planes weren't groundbreaking but served as a stepping stone toward competing in the regional jet market. In 2002, the advanced regional jet ARJ-21 project was initiated, spearheaded by AVIC-1. From the outset, the goal was to design the aircraft without basing it on existing models. Unlike the MA-60, which was a modification of the military transport Y-7, a local version of the Soviet N-24, the new aircraft had to be a full-fledged civilian airliner without the military design elements that, while simplifying creation, often impaired performance and complicated market promotion. The requirements for the ARJ-21 were not overly ambitious. A capacity of 70 to 80 seats, a range of about 3,000 to 4,000 kilometers, and competitive performance, all without chasing after innovation. The focus was on minimizing risks. The aircraft also needed to operate effectively throughout China, which often meant less developed airfields and challenging hot and high conditions. The commercial strategy aimed to balance good performance with moderate costs targeting airlines in developing countries with limited resources and often opt for the secondary market. These were the customers the ARJ-21 aimed to win over. From the beginning, broad international cooperation was a priority. The aircraft needed to have strong export potential and meet international certification standards, which would be easier by using established market technologies. AVIC knew they could not develop certain complex systems to the required standard or within an acceptable time frame alone. Cooperation allowed them to gain valuable experience and technology. The large Chinese market attracted foreign interest and many companies joined the project, including Rockwell Collins, Avionics, General Electric Engines, and the Ukrainian company Antonov Wing Design. Within China, the project was also a high priority with many organizations contributing. The main production sites were in Shanghai, Xi'an, Chengdu, and Shenyang, with the final assembly taking place at a plant near Dachang Airport in Shanghai, a notable hub for the Chinese aircraft industry. The timeline was ambitious. The first flight was planned for 2005, with deliveries starting in 2007. To be honest, this timeline seemed unrealistic from the start. Even though the aircraft was relatively simple, progressing from initial blueprints to first delivery in just five years was highly challenging. In reality, the testing and certification program didn't start until late 2008, when the prototype made its maiden flight. This phase involved several aircraft and a comprehensive range of tests and flights across various regions in China and beyond. By this time, the aircraft had been officially named Xiangfeng, or Soaring Phoenix, following a public vote. The testing phase was arduous and revealed numerous issues, equipment failures, mechanical difficulties, structural fatigue, and wing durability problems. Problems. All these challenges, coupled with a lack of experience, turned what many thought would be a quick certification process into a painful journey. Faced with these setbacks, many companies might have cancelled the project. However, the Chinese persisted because the ARJ-21 was part of a broader aviation development program, and its failure would have called into question not just the plane, but the entire Chinese aviation industry. The project also had significant political backing. 
wasn't just a private enterprise's passion project. A cancellation would not have been well received by high-level officials. Instead, the project underwent a major industry reform, and after reorganization, the ARJ-21 came under the control of the newly formed COMAC, which became the main producer of Chinese civilian airliners, including the C-919. Finally, in 2014, the Civil Aviation Administration of China, CAAC, issued a type certificate officially marking the birth of the Phoenix. In 2016, the aircraft received certification from the Republic of Congo's Ministry of Transport. Although this is only valid in Republic of Congo, the larger aviation authorities like the FAA and EASA have yet to certify the plane, although the Chinese are actively pursuing these certifications. Let's take a closer look at the Soaring Phoenix, the ARJ-21.700. It's 33.5 meters long, has a wingspan of 27.3 meters, and stands 8.44 meters tall. The layout is familiar for regional jets, a low-swept wing, a T-shaped tail, and a pair of engines located at the rear of the fuselage. The tricycle landing gear is notably robust. It shares similarities with aircraft like the Bombardier, CRJ-700, Fokker 70, and a few others. Others. A bit of history. After the warming of relations between China and the United States in the 1970s, American aircraft manufacturers rushed to explore this new market. In 1985, McDonnell Douglas partnered with Shanghai Aircraft to set up licensed production of their MD-80 and MD-90 aircraft in China. Although this venture didn't turn into a success story, only a few dozen planes were produced. The Chinese gained valuable experience working with such aircraft. Fast forward to today, the ARJ-21 bears a strong resemblance to those Douglas models leading many to speculate that the Phoenix is essentially a modernized copy. On one hand, this is true. The fuselage and several design elements are very similar. On the other hand, most of the components and all systems are new. This approach is pragmatic. With limited experience in developing such aircraft, it would be unwise to discard what they already had and start from scratch just to avoid suspicion. One downside is that the plane appears somewhat dated, reflecting design trends from the 1980s. Key features of the ARJ-21. The wing has a 25-degree sweep, a supercritical profile, and small winglets. The high-lift devices are well-developed. Slats extend along almost the entire wing length, complemented by large slotted flaps, spoilers, and ailerons. The wing has an area of 79.9 square meters, which adds lift for operation in hot and high-altitude conditions. The aircraft's empty weight is nearly 25 tons, which is quite heavy. Most of its peers in this class are a couple of tons lighter. The issue of excessive weight has troubled the ARJ-21 from the start. AVIC-1 explored various solutions, including using lighter alloys and composites, even collaborating with Bombardier on the topic. However, it seems these efforts didn't pan out, and the Phoenix remains a largely metal aircraft. This weight affects the range. With a maximum takeoff weight of 40.5 tons, it can fly 2,200 kilometers. Not much for a modern regional airliner, especially considering its relatively large fuel tanks. It's likely that when fully loaded, the plane can be fully fueled, a common issue in aviation. To address this, COMAC increased the maximum takeoff weight limit. The ARJ-21 700ER, for example, weighs 43.5 tons, allowing for full fuel tanks and extending the range to 3,700 kilometers. Other specifications are more or less standard for a regional aircraft, a service ceiling of 39,000 feet, and a cruising speed of up to 470 knots. Takeoff and landing require runways about 1,900 meters long. engines and onboard equipment. One of the aircraft's most complex components, the power plant, is supplied by General Electric, which provided the CF-34 family engine in the 10A version. This engine is a sibling to the 10E, which powers the first-generation Embraer E-190 and 195 airliners. The engine has a bypass ratio of 5 to 1 and a 53-inch fan with sliding thrust reversal and chevrons on the nozzle. 
The ARJ-21-700's thrust is nearly 76 kilonewtons. The engine isn't new but is reliable, economical, and widely used in aviation, minimizing risks and keeping costs low, which was precisely what was needed. A downside is that the engine is no longer state-of-the-art. In the early 2000s, it was competitive, but now, 20 years later, there are more advanced engines available. For example, Embraer has already upgraded to next-generation GTFs. Another problem is the reliance on a foreign manufacturer. The Chinese aviation industry aims to minimize external dependencies and seeks to replace foreign components with domestic ones. Currently, the CJ-1000A turbojet based on the WS-20 turbofan is in development to replace the GE engines in the future. The arj 21700s avionics include a range of onboard equipment largely provided by Rockwell Collins. It's equipped with an integrated ProLine 21 set, including an autopilot and various flight systems, plus Chinese-made avionics. Again, the aim was to balance cost with reliability, utilizing reliable proven technologies. cabin layout and variants. Inside, the ARJ21700 features a classic 2 plus 3 seating configuration. The maximum seating capacity in a one-class layout is 90 passengers, while a two-class configuration offers 78 seats. Given the compact nature of the cabin, comfort isn't the highest priority. The plane doesn't boast a large luggage capacity, it simply fits in the spaces between systems in the rear and under the cabin floor. Overhead bins are standard size. The restrooms are small with only two available which could lead to long lines during full flights. An onboard kitchen is located in the rear standard for this class. Unfortunately, passengers won't find modern amenities like in-flight entertainment or Wi-Fi. The ARJ21 is aimed at short-range flights where these features are not crucial. The ARJ21-700 was the only variant available for a long time. However, in 2022, Comac announced the development of a shortened version called the ARJ21-700D designed for cargo transport. Another variant, the ARJ21-900, will be a lengthened version, extending the fuselage by 3 meters. This variant is still in development and will seat up to 105 passengers. The first flight is planned for 2025 with deliveries starting in 2026. The ARJ21 Tort 900 will feature advanced avionics and upgraded engines, although these specifics have yet to be announced. Conclusion In summary, while the ARJ-21 does not aim to revolutionize the aviation industry with groundbreaking technology, it offers a reliable, cost-effective solution for regional airlines, particularly in developing markets. It represents a significant step for China's aviation industry, serving as a learning platform for future developments. Its story illustrates both the challenges and opportunities of entering a highly competitive global market with a clear focus on practicality and gradual improvement.